All right, guys, today I'm going to show you how to drive a bass boat. Most importantly, how to drive a boat in chine walk. I've had quite a few people reach out to me about their bass boat, in particular Falcon. They say, I don't know how to drive it through the chine walk. My boat chine walk. What do I need to set up my boat like? I'm going to tell you exactly what my dad told me years and years ago when I was like 15 or 16 years old. Boats do not chine walk. Drivers chine walk. So if your boat is, is chine, walk, chine walking on you, it's most likely not the boat. There are a few things that you can look at that may cause a boat just to chine walk just a little bit. But most likely it's just not enough seat time. Inexperienced driver. Especially if I, I'm in a Falcon F20 Predator. These are one of the easiest boat I've ever had to drive. It doesn't, it doesn't take a lot. I can put my 11 year old behind this boat, let him jack it up and he can drive it down the lake. But I do understand when you get in that 63 to 65 miles an hour range, the boat, it wants to, it wants to dance a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about it before. What exactly is chine walking? Why is it doing that? If I tell you what that is, what's going on, it'll help you understand how to drive it and counteract it. There's a lot of people who say you jerk the steering wheel this way, that way. It's one of those things that's like walking. You just, you know, trying to explain to somebody how to walk is pretty hard. It's just like put one foot in front of the other. And they're like, well, yeah, when I put my foot in front of the other one, the other one stays behind. Like it's very complicated to describe how to walk. It's the same way with driving a boat. You can explain that you need to pull the steering wheel that way or this way, but really and truly until you spend enough time behind the wheel and just understand what your boat is doing, it's really hard to explain it. You just got to learn how to do it. And it comes down to just repetition. You need to take your boat to the lake and you need to spend some time behind the wheel and learn how it reacts to different things, different trims, <clears throat> different props, how it reacts in wakes, how it reacts when you trim it way up, when you trim it way down. You need to learn how your vessel reacts and responds to steering manipulation. Going back to chine walk, what is it? Basically what it is when you trim your boat, the bow is rising and I'm going to dumb this way down to layman's terms, okay? I know it's going to be some boat geometrists out there that's going to tell me that I'm not saying it right. I'm going to tell you the country way. This is the Brian Latimer way. Basically when you're trimming your boat up, when you get up to speed, you get on plane, you want to go faster, what is the first thing we do? We go and reach for the trim. You got two throttles on a bass boat. You got an actual th throttle, a hand throttle or a foot throttle, and your other throttle is your trim. As you trim that boat up, the motor up, what the trim does, puts more downforce on the rear of your boat and you get bow lift. It's putting pressure on the back, you get bow lift. As you get bow lift, there's less fiberglass in the water. We know that a bass boat has a V hole, right? So as you get less fiberglass out of the water, now you're basically trying to balance the V of that boat on the water as you're driving 60 to 63 to 65 to 70 miles an hour. So that chine walking is basically the boat bouncing back and forth off of that V. There's not much back there holding the boat in the water. Your bow is not steering, even midways of the boat, maybe in some of you guys slower boats is, but basically from the seat back is the only thing that's touching the water. And that rocking that you feel, that chine walk, duck walk, that's basically the boat bouncing back and forth because it's just a small surface area of fiberglass that is now in control of the boat. That's what chine walking is. With that being said, your job as the driver is as that thing is, you're trying to balance that out. You're trying to lessen that. That's all you're doing. That's how you walk a boat out of chine walk. That's one of the ways anyway. Other way is sometimes chine walking can be a indication that your motor is buried too far down in the water. It's basically your prop is turning and every time that blade slaps the water, it's creating so much torque that now you're bouncing. You're bouncing back and forth, bouncing back and forth. If you got a hydraulic jack plate, it's easy to find out where the, the right spot is to get your boat to walk out of that chine walk. If you don't have a hydraulic jack plate, you gotta do like we used to do in the old days. You bring your box in wrench and a ratchet to the, to the boat ramp and you do it in about eighth inch increments until you get it exactly where you want it. So first thing I would tell you to do, especially if you've got a hydraulic jack plate, that's why it's important to spend seat time, because you gotta figure this out, and the only way to do it is seat time. 
you're probably going to want to raise your motor just a little bit. I like to do about a quarter inch increments with hydraulic jack plate. You can do half inch increments. Luckily on my Bob's machine shop, I've got a, I've got a gauge right here at the dash. I can see exactly what my jack plate is on the back without having to look back at it. So if it's down too far, you're going to get an extra chine walk. You want to raise that jack plate until you can get the max RPMs you can get. You'll notice the chine walk will at least be less may not go away but it'll at least be less you can go down the lake exactly like how you want to it's my suggestion that when it's a slick day like how it is today you can let that you can let it up you know depending on the boat i got an f20 predator uh f20 predator i, I run mine about two inches above the hole two inches on my jack plate that might not be two inches on the hole but on the boss machine shop running at the two inch mark it's exactly on the 12 o'clock mark on my gauge. That runs, that works perfect for me in most situations. Now, if I have a big load, I'll drop that engine down, try to get a little bit more tor torque, a little bit more grab on my prop so I can go down the lake. I think that's it. I think that's all I need to talk to you about. Let's crank up. I'm gonna show you exactly what I do when I'm driving down the lake when I encounter chine walk. There ain't gonna be a lot of chine walk. If you got enough weight in your boat, you'll notice that your boat will probably chine walk a little more when there's just you. But if you got a partner, I got my I got my filmer here. He's gonna add a little weight, not much. We're both skinny. Both of us together might weigh 250. <laughs> so, um, but it does balance out the boat. Cause remember what I said. Basically, the boat is on a V, and that chine walk is just it bouncing back and forth. So if I've got even weight distributed. It's not going to chime walk as bad. When it's just me by myself, it does want to bounce quite a bit and I have to drive it more. Since it's two of us today, you're not going to see me doing a lot of manipulation with the, with the steering wheel. All my manipulation is done with my trim, either my jack plate or my engine trim. But once it get out of hand, all I got to do is bump my trim down. If I'm comfortable, feeling froggy, really confident in how the boat's responding to what I'm doing, trim her up and let her eat. Let us snort, I hear some of the boards say. So let's put it in gear, let's take it out here and I'll walk you through. I'm gonna talk you through exactly everything that I'm doing and everything I'm feeling. As a boat driver, it's very important for you to feel. You gotta be a feeler. You gotta feel how the boat reacts to what you do with the trim, the steering wheel, and the jack plate. Seems very obvious, but I just wanna go through all the basics. I got my motor trimmed all the way down. That'll get your bow down so you can see and get the boat to plane off the fastest. I don't start off with my with my jack plate, I'm sorry. I don't start off with that where I want it for top end speed. I'll actually adjust that as I'm going down the lake. You don't have to do that. You can start right from the get go wherever you want it. Usually with chine walk, you're not gonna have it until you get in that 60 mile an hour mark. You're probably not gonna feel much going on from 30 to 50. It's probably just gonna sit there and do everything it's supposed to do. Um, avoid hitting the trim as soon as you get on plane. As the boat gets on plane, you feel it max out on speed, then you wanna start to hit your trim. You notice here I'm starting to trim my boat after I get to about 45 miles an hour. I'll start to trim the motor and let that prop break free some so I can get some more RPMs out of it. Keep in mind, the more you trim your motor, the less fiberglass you're gonna have in the water, the more bow rise you're gonna create. So the boat's gonna get a little bit more, it's gonna get a little bit more sketchy as you start to trim the engine. Once you get in that 60 mile an hour range, that's where you kinda got to start to, to be a feeler, is what I like. You wanna be able to feel what the boat is doing, how it's reacting to the trim, any kind of wakes or uh, wind or ripple on the water is going to react to it and you just your job as a driver is to minimize that quote unquote chine walk i did say this from the beginning and i can't reiterate it enough it's going to be seat time your trim is your best friend that is your accelerator and your brake on a bass boat so as that boat starts to loosen up you're going to feel that hole free up when you feel it free up, if it gets a little bit above what you think you can drive it, just bump the trim back down. It'll come back to a, a, a space where you can actually handle it. As you get some seat time in, you're gonna learn and be able to feel what the boat is doing and how to manipulate it with the steering wheel and the trim and be able to drive it through that little sweet section 
where she just wants to get a little bit hairy. It feels pretty good. Cool. I promise you, it's really it's not like, oh, that hard, Rizbo. but you gotta this be patient. You gotta spend some time behind the wheel and learn how to feel what's going on with your boat.